Hello YouTubers and uh, welcome back to part 4 in my DIY analog synthesizer project tutorial. Now in this video what I'm going to cover is the triangle wave wave shaping circuit which we derive from the saw core oscillator which we've seen in part 1 and in part 3 where I wave shape to the pulse stroke the square wave as well. Now what I first did is we have a look at this schematic here. You can have just have a look at where it's from. I've just kind of I downloaded this um, quite a while back and tried it with the values prescribed and it wasn't quite working for me. Now, what it doesn't actually state is um, the direction of the sawtooth now there was a reason why i said use the use a shock key diode in the saw core and the reason being that really really affects the shape of your triangle waves so please don't use one of these guys here which is a i'll just zoom in a little bit there that is a 1n4181 or sorry a 1n4148 signal diode what we need to use is something that looks like so. This is a shock key diode, which is a 1N5818, or we can use another type of diode. I think it's a rectifier diode called a 1N4007 or 4001. And they're, again, these are quite very cheap parts to get for them. You can sort of a, a sort of local electronics uh, stores etc for pennies really again we have our TL 074 uh, quad op amp and we have C here which is so this will be if we look at the top there's a notch let's turn it around this way if we look at the top there's a notch this is where we indicate on that side will be pin 1 the same goes for every single pretty much every single IC as a standard you would see so what we're going to do is you build our triangle wave down here from between pins 8, 9 and, or sorry, for between pin 7, let me start again, 8, 9 and 10. Right, so the first things first, what we need to do is basically use one of these which is a trimmer which looks like so and we want a minimum value of 500k and we're going to need a couple of resistors my starting values I would recommend would probably be about about 33k so two resistors about 33k you could try it using 47 I've kind of been toying about with this circuit to get it right because it's been quite difficult to get right and you could possibly you will possibly need the capacitor now so what we do is we come in with the saw sawtooth in this this uh this direction so it ramps up as opposed to ramping down we'll go into one side of our uh, of our trimmer so we're going to the middle of the trimmer and one side of the trimmer will be unused so point two is the middle of the potentiometer, which is the wiper side. And what we will do is we'll, we'll come in, we'll come in with our saw, go into, into the one side of the potentiometer, let's say point one, and the middle is point two. So what we can't do is we come out with point two and we relieve point three and C, which is non-connected. Point three non-connected. Now what we need to do is take the resistor, take a resistor, and we'll say forty seven K and pop that into the non or yeah the non inverting side of the op amp and we'll also take another resistor from that middle node of the potentiometer 47k again 
and then we will pop that, sorry about my bad drawing people, and we'll pop that into the invert inside. So there we have the two resistors, 47K and 47K. Now what you will also need to do next is take your diode and that needs to go to the non-inverting node. So we'll take the diode out from the non-inverting node and we need to have this. I can't exactly remember exactly which way this needs to go. But we need to have this going to ground or we could call this our zero volts. If you find that doesn't work, swap it around the other way so we're, we're in reverse direction. And that is basically it. So now you should have a or something that looks like a triangle wave. Sometimes we can get the again, this is something which is going to be variant depending on the um, voltage of your power lines. If you're using two nine volt batteries, you may get a good triangle shape. If you if you're using if your power rails are not quite balanced at exactly the same voltage, it may be a bit different. So you should have a triangle that pretty much sits symmetrically between between the the, the uh, I think we call this the the, the zero sort of voltage line. So it goes between plus and oscillates between plus and minus. So when you first set this up, you may find that you're not actually getting that shape at all. And the reason being, this is why we use the trimmer. So what we actually may find is we have something that looks like so. So we'll have the triangle wave come through and it may be slight, slightly slanted, looking more like a saw. So one side is not, and you can hear in the tone of that, it sounds a bit more nasal and a bit more like a saw of, of a bit more harmonics where we want to try and get as close as we can to a triangle that sounds very, very pure and very, very hollow. Again, it's one of these things you can use your ear. So as we turn the trimmer, one of these sides will move the symmetry. So we use it, the, we use the trimmer as the symmetry trimmer to trim the symmetry of the of the triangle wave. Now, when I first started building uh, my first triangle wave circuit using the prescribed components from the schematic I showed you at the beginning, I was getting a triangle wave looking more like this. So I kept swapping and changing parts over and as I was adjusting the potentiometer, I could see this side rising, so I decided to swap the values. So if we go over to here, and if I call this R1, and I'll call this R2, and I'll just call this trimmer T1, you can keep just swap the values of these to say 33K, maybe try 133, maybe try 1. 47k and vice versa you may even need to go up further and see whether or not your triangle is your triangle wave is becoming more symmetrical it is also optional here at this sawtooth at the input to add add resistance as this will sort of reduce the amplitude of the sawtooth as well doesn't always work Right, and our last component, what we haven't actually dealt with, is the capacitor. Now, if we'll draw our, our op amp back here, and this is going to be our pin 8, and pin 9, and pin 10. So pin 9, inverting, pin 10, non-inverting, and this is our output. What we may find when we have our triangle wave almost perfect is our triangle wave shape may come out looking like so with a glitch. 
a very sort of spiky glitch at the top. It could come at both points. Just to uh, backtrack, I forgot something very, very important to mention here. If we come here and we'll call this R3, we also need to put another resistor here. And this resistor will take from the we'll take that from the non-inverting side. Right, so we'll take it from the non-inverting side to the output. Again, this can be a a um, component of choice of value. So we kind of ideally want this between anything between say six hundred and eighty k to about one mega ohm. Again, you have to see the shape of your triangle wave. There's not one set of components which will get it bang on right. You kind of have to experiment with this. So have have a good handful of uh, uh, resistors before you set this up and, and, and say, well, that didn't work. So you have, I, I've toyed about this circuit too. I've got it quite right. And not on all, all my free oscillators have slightly different values. And I'm guessing because the different dist the distance from the power supply gives a different, different, slightly different um, amount of voltage or even current. I could be wrong there. So yeah, so it's important we have this I've written R3, I'll put this R3 back over here so we have this as R3. So we have that resistor in there, the 680k to 1 mega ohm resistor. Now, as I said, that last component that we haven't quite dealt with is this capacitor. And what this will do is this will take out, hopefully, will take out the glitch. So we'll bring in, we have that resistor, which I'm just going to call this L820. And that will go to our that will go to our output. Eight twenty. Sorry about my horrible looking eight there. So eight hundred and twenty K. And we'll take that capacitor and tie it to the same output node from the inverting input. And this capacitor value we should try and keep this in the picofarads range. And if you have no idea what a picofarad range capacitor is, when you look on the capacitor, there will be markings. So that's our capacitor legs. And we will make, we will, we want something around about, say about 10 picofarads to, let's say about 47. And hopefully we can eliminate the uh, glitch error with the triangle wave. And that is about it for now. Uh, I'll see you in part five where I will sort of be going through things like the LFO and setting up sort of um, output controls, etc, etc. Again, you don't have to strictly go by this. There are other ways of making tri doing triangle wave shaping, i.e. using transistors, which are a bit more complicated. Um, so have a check out of, if you can, there's lots of schematics online. There's a few different methods for doing it, but this is the method that I use and they're sounding quite buff to be honest with you. Right. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching people and I will catch you all very soon.